What I'm going to show you today is some basic programming with a Nord lead and specifically how to approximate the laser harp sound that Jean-Michel Jarre has used famously on stage. He uses an entirely different synthesizer so we're not going to even try to get that exact same sound. Uh, it's probably impossible. I'm just going to show you how to approximate that. And the first thing is I have all the knobs set counterclockwise to give you a starting point. Uh, the master volume level obviously has to be turned up or else you won't be able to hear it at all. So I'm going to turn this on and it defaults to playing back a normal patch that's already loaded. What we want to do is put it into manual mode. So that's shift manual. And so wherever the knobs are set is the sound that we'll hear. Right now, the gain in the amplifier stage is turned all the way down so we won't hear it. Um, so we need to turn that up. Another issue is the filter type uh, is set to low pass 24 decibel. And the frequency here is turned all the way down. So it's only letting through frequencies that are under this frequency range. But this frequency is turned all the way down, so nothing can go through. If we change the filter type to high pass 24 decibel, we'd be letting all the sound through because the frequency is set low and we'd be passing anything higher than that. Uh, before I change that setting to let anything through though, uh, I want to set some other features. We want to take the LFOs out of the loop, so I turn the amount down on that. LFO 2, turn the amount down on that. Uh, the modulation envelope, you can either turn the amount down all the way or you can hit this button so none of these LEDs are lit up. It amounts to the same thing. Um, the amplifier settings, I want to put that to a, the fastest attack possible, so that's already set. The decay, we're going to want you know around halfway. Um, sustain, same thing. Release, it's fine with it all the way down. Um, that's just going to cut off the sound abruptly when the note ends. We'll leave that for now. Uh, these filter settings aren't going to really come into play. Um, the envelope amount, we can turn all the way down. Resonance, all the way down. Um, we want to make sure, you know, distortion is turned off. Unison is turned off. Uh, portamento can be all the way down, and you can turn auto off there. Octave shift, um, that's going to change the entire pitch of our sound. So if we wanted it to be um, high pitched, um, we could shift it up a couple octaves, or if we wanted it to be a bass patch, we could shift it down some. We're just going to leave it in the middle. What I'm going to do is uh, turn this keyboard track on to full. Uh, that'll keep it so no matter what note you play, it's going to have a fairly consistent tone. Um, if you have that setting off, if you play higher notes on the keyboard, you'll see they'll become more progressively muddy compared to the low notes. With the keyboard tracking on, uh, it's not going to be that wide dramatic change in, in tone character. So I like that setting. I want the resonance down um, so there's no sharp peaks. Um, and so we'll open up the frequency here. And you can hear the sound come in. Now what we want to do is adjust the basic character of the sound. Uh, we do that using the oscillator, uh, the wave selection here. You can pick a sine wave. Um, triangle, sawtooth, uh, or square. If you pick square, it 
is adjusted by the pulse width here. If it's turned all the way down, that's going to be a true square wave. Um, if you turn it this way, it becomes a pulse wave and that thins out the sound. Um, this oscillator mix here, if it's turned all the way counterclockwise, you'll only be getting the sound out of this oscillator here. If you turn it all the way this way, you're getting the sound just out of oscillator two. Um, what I'm gonna do is set both of these to square. This pulse width controls both oscillators at once. There's no way to get this to be a square wave and this to be a pulse. Um, keyboard track, that is if you play a key on the keyboard or send MIDI to this synth, oscillator two will follow that pitch. Uh, if you turn off keyboard track, it's just going to be monotone and only oscillator one will respond to whatever you're playing. That usually you would want on. What we're doing to achieve the laser harp sound is putting it in sync mode, which what that does is forces oscillator two to use the same pitch that oscillator one is. And oscillator one is of course dictated by whatever you're playing on the keyboard. So keyboard track can just be turned off because all of the, the, the note and the tuning is all totally dependent on oscillator one and the pitch being played. In sync mode, this actually becomes more of a tone knob and defines the character of the sound. So that changes the way you'd program the synth quite a bit. Um, I'll change this over to oscillator two and turn off sync mode. If you change this pitch mode, you'll see when it's in tune with oscillator one, this octave light will come up. Uh, the silk screen numbers around this knob aren't exactly precise. Uh, and they're not necessarily calibrated correctly, so you really have to depend on that light to get perfect tuning. Uh, same thing with this fine tune. If you change it, you'll notice right when you hit zero, it blinks for just a second, and then you know you've tuned it correctly. So we'll put that back into sync mode. And we have square waves for both oscillators. Um, the FM amount, we're not using FM at all, so that will be turned down all the way. Um, now you'll notice, since it's in sync mode, when I move this pitch here, we get a sweeping characteristic. Like I mentioned before, that's because this knob, when it's in sync mode, becomes more a, a tonal knob. Oscillator two is being forced to the same pitch that oscillator one is at. So when you move this, it's just, the sound is basically being pulled apart, which generates lots of harmonics. Now we don't want to sit there and tweak that knob all day when we're playing, so we want to automate it. To do that, you can do a couple things. You can map it to the LFOs and have those control this pitch knob. Or you can use the modulation envelope, and that's what we'll be doing right now. Um, there is one strange thing. There is something that you'll notice where if you turn the pitch down, the sound disappears. For this effect to work, you need to turn up the pitch to be about the same octave or within one or two octaves. 
it's almost useless at the high end. It's totally useless at the low end. So there's a sweet spot between this range here. Now to map the modulation envelope to this knob, we hit that so it's oscillator. We'll turn that attack all the way down. We'll turn the decay about in this range here. The modulation envelope settings will make a drastic difference in your tone. So with decay around 60 to 75 percent and the amount from 55 to 60 percent, you'll get that classic bow wow auto wah effect. If you keep turning the amount up, you'll end up with strange kind of missile command Atari berserk sounds. So there's definitely a sweet spot. So we've hit upon the laser harp sound primarily. We want to do a couple things to fine tune that. Uh, we want to turn unison on, that'll fatten it up. Turning distortion on. Turning distortion on will give it some extra character. Um, we also want to look at the, the filter here. Um, so we're going to cut back on the frequency a little bit to make it not so high-end and troubly. Maybe to like 70%. The resonance we're going to change just up to basically, um, you know, 5%, just that first tick mark. That's, that sounds pretty good, but we want to revisit the amplifier section. The attack, you can turn down a little bit if you think it's too biting. Uh, if you turn it too far, you're going to get a swell sound that doesn't really work. We need lots of attack to capture the pluck of the harp. So we're going to leave that pretty low. Um, we want the sustain up quite a bit because we want the sound to be pretty uniform in volume. So that's pretty good and we'll have to bump up the decay a bit. So now there's a bit of an attack but the sound doesn't drop off entirely. Now when the note ends, you'll notice that it cuts off abruptly. If we turn the release up, it dies out a little more naturally, like a reverb kind of effect. So we can also revisit this. And try to dial in some other tone colors. Or we can use octave shift. That sounds pretty good. Having it set too high kind of loses its resonant sweeping character.
Having it set low is pretty effective, though. Now there's some more crazy things that you can do now that we've basically captured our laser harp effect. Um, if you want, you can, instead of using the modulation envelope, we can turn that off and we'll assign the LFO one to this knob here. So to do that, um, to do that, We'll assign it to oscillator two. We'll change the LFO mode to be the random wave selection. And then if we turn the rate up about halfway and the amount to the maximum, then you'll see that there's this kind of crazy robot effect. And then if you mix in some of oscillator one, and turn down the oscillator shift, then you have some kind of bubbling bass sound. And if you want some more of Oscillator 2 to make the crazy robotics, we can turn this back up. Then to go back to our standard laser harp sound, um, we can just turn the amount of the LFO one off all the way, and we can go back to our modulation envelope and assign that to oscillator two. And then you can change the quality of oscillator 2 by changing the waveform changing oscillator 1 doesn't affect the sound as much as changing the waveform of oscillator two. And especially not as much as changing the pitch of oscillator two. And there you have it, the laser harp.